Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime. I'm having a bit of a problem. Uh, got a bunch of these new panels that were still put up on the wall, kind of spread it out, help with the sound. A bunch of the panels, though, are not inflating properly. If anyone has any tips uh, for how to get them, because they came vacuum sealed, anyone has any tips how to make them kind of puff up like this one did, uh, please let me know. I know like one of the major tips was obviously putting water on them, and we did spray some water on a bunch of them, uh, but even doing that, it didn't work. And then I actually took some of them and soaked them in water and then let them sit you know, and dry out, and they still didn't puff all the way up. So is there like some magic trick to make these things puff up, I don't know. Uh, obviously all the ones we've had before, we've had for years, so they've had a lot of time to puff out. I really want to get using these. We've had them for a week and they're still not up on the wall. So whatever folks, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We have uh, so many new stories to get to today. I think like six big ones. Some of them are gonna be some stories we missed out on last week. Some are gonna be brand new stuff that happened today. I can't wait to get to it. Before we do, uh, hey, if this is the first video of mine you've ever seen, welcome to Nintendo Prime. And why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, drop the like, Comment down below, help spread the love. We're on our road to 80,000 subscribers, so I appreciate every single one of you. You wanna know how much I appreciate our subscribers? So much so that one of our lucky subscribers this month is going to win a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, or a Nintendo Switch OLED. To enter, all you have to do is head to that gleam.io link down in the pinned comment or the description. And the only real requirement is that you are subscribed. Uh, but yeah, you have to be subscribed to win. All right, let's get into our first story. And this one's, this is a fun one. This one deals with Hogwarts Legacy Edition. So we, there was a big showcase for it last Thursday. Looks absolutely incredible. I know some people obviously have some outside concerns about certain political aspects and all this stuff dealing with JK Rowling. We're not here to really cover that. I'm focused on the game itself. I am a Potterhead. I do enjoy Harry Potter stuff. Enjoyed the book series, enjoyed the movies, enjoyed various games over the years. And this is looking to be the grand this game of them all potentially so why are we talking about it here at nintendo prime well because they listed on the official website that it is coming to nintendo switch now it's also coming to playstation 4 and xbox one as well obviously giving it a higher chance to come to nintendo switch but besides it coming to nintendo switch what we really want to know is is it a cloud version or is it physical because a physical version of the game is up for pre-order at best buy and at Amazon. In fact, I will have affiliate links down in the description if you guys wanna go ahead and pre-order it, hoping that this physical edition is actually real. Now, some people on the team have already come out to speak about this in an interview, and all they would say is, all we can confirm is it's coming to Nintendo Switch. They tried to like literally go, hey, is this cloud? Is this you know a, a localized version? They won't commit to it. The fact they're not committing to it tells me it's probably cloud if I had to guess, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. It is on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One that does give it a really good chance to get a native port. So let's just cross our fingers and hope this becomes another major third party game coming to Switch this year natively. That's always the hope is native. So uh, we'll see what happens, but yeah, that's kind of a big story that happened at the end of last week. Another big story that happened at the end of last week was that the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC dropped, and when it dropped, so did a data mine of a bunch of upcoming tracks for that DLC. Let's go over what these tracks are according to the data mine, and they are Sydney Sprint from Mario Kart Tour, New York Minute from Mario Kart Tour, Singapore Speedway from Mario Kart Tour, Sydney Sprint, from Mario Kart Tour, Mario Circuit from the Super Nintendo, Sunset Wilds from the Super Nintendo, DK Summit from the Wii, Maple Treeway from the Wii, Waluigi Stadium from the GameCube, Rainbow Road from the 3DS, Mary Mountain from Mario Kart Tour, Vancouver Velocity from Mario Kart Tour, Sunset Wilds from the Game Boy Advance, and Vanilla Lakes from the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, obviously a lot of these tracks are from Mario Kart Tour, and some people are actually more excited about the Tour tracks than the others because they do represent tracks that many people haven't played since they're from a mobile game that a lot of Mario Kart 8 fans have refused to play. So yeah, that is somewhat exciting that those feel like brand new tracks in comparison to the others, but really, you could say that about any of these games. If you didn't play Mario Kart on GameCube or Game Boy Advance or on the SNES, like a lot of these tracks might feel brand new to you. So this is really cool that we have this leak out there so we at least know, I don't know, what the next couple of cups are likely going to contain. Again, this isn't all 48 tracks. So it's not like all 48 tracks, or I guess the 40 that I haven't released yet, are leaked here. This is just what was in this update probably indicating what the next couple waves of DLC, some of the tracks that are gonna be included. Uh, so that's obviously really good. Personally, I like the DLC. Um, I will note, however, that maybe this is just because certain things don't age well, I don't know, of the eight new tracks that we had added. 
I think six of them are extremely easy tracks, if that makes sense, like especially compared to what they did with the other Mario Kart tracks. I just find them to be very, very simple. Obviously Ninja Hideway is fantastic, but yeah, I think most of the rest are just really basic and really easy, but people are gonna love that. Coconut Ball and Ninja Hideway are basically the two that I really love the most. Everything else is just kind of uh, very little obstacles, very little, uh, much to do about much of anything, to be honest. Um, they're very straightforward tracks, so. I don't know, some people really like that. I kind of like the more challenging aspects, but hey, you know what, whatever makes me look absolutely really, really good when I play these tracks because three starring 200cc, these are the easiest cups I've ever had doing that. So, oh well, whatever. Thank you guys so much for that one. Let's get into our next story. So Triangle Strategy is a game I am playing through right now. I wanted to finish it before Kirby. I'm not quite sure if I will. I'll probably plow through Kirby and then get back to Triangle Strategy. But what's interesting here is obviously considering the sales data for an SRPG, a strategy RPG, because strategy RPGs tend to not sell extremely well. And well, we have some good news here. So there were 800,000 announced in worldwide sales, but worldwide sales notably did not include sales in Japan. And according to Famitsu, it has sold over 200,000 copies in Japan. When you combine that, that means this game, Triangle Strategy, has sold 1 million copies plus obviously it's sold more than 1 million. That's really, really exciting. That got there faster uh, than most other games in this you know, space, this little niche of strategy RPGs. So that's really good news for Triangle Strategy. Whether or not it's gonna hit two or three million, I have no idea, but this is good news to get more games like this. Obviously, I know a lot of us are still waiting for that true Octopath Traveler sequel that we were supposed to get, and they seem to be focusing more on Octopath Traveler Mobile. I'm sure the mobile game, by the way, it plays really, really well, and it's, it's doing fine, uh, but it's obviously a little bit disappointing to continue to get all these mobile announcements for Octopath Traveler, but never that true sequel we're supposed to get on consoles. But hey, you know what? There's still time, and maybe it's going to come to Nintendo's next system. I guess uh, time will tell with that. So right now there is a big eShop sale going on, over 1,500 games on sale, which there's always a bunch of games. What I find most notable is some of the games that are here, uh, and I'll just note a handful of them here. We got Grand Theft Auto Trilogy down at $39.99 right now. Life is Strange True Colors Deluxe Edition, that's a $70 version, down at $52.48. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot Plus, a new Powers Awakened set, Ultimate Edition is $50.99. They do have a deluxe version, or the non-deluxe version that's $29.99 and these were originally $85 and $60 so pretty big discounts there. Monster Hunter Stories 2 and uh, Monster Hunter Rise Ultimate Edition are both down to $46.19 uh, so it's really good for people looking to get into Monster Hunter. We got the new uh, Monster Hunter Rise DLC dropping this summer so this might be a great chance to get in. Guardians of the Galaxy Cloud Edition has been 50% off down to $29.99. Whether or not that's still worth you trying it out I don't know but hey that's a lot closer to what I feel like cloud versions of games should cost. Final Fantasy 12 is down to $24.99, as are a bunch of other Final Fantasy games. And the list goes on and on and on. In fact, you know what? Let's roll this tape a little bit and let myself just kind of scroll through with some music. Obviously that's just, you know, a handful, you know, dozen, a few dozen uh, examples on the eShop right now. Just the sales are incredible at the moment. 
Uh, and this is just worth checking out because these are digital only sales. These are not being applied to physical copies of games. So that's one advantage of digital and physical is I guess we got multiple ways that sales can happen. And right now we're having a digital focused sale. So uh, it's worth checking out for anyone looking to save a few bucks. And uh, let's move on to our next story. So today a brand new Witcher game was announced. You guys all remember the Witcher franchise, specifically for us Nintendo fans, The Witcher 3 that was ported to Switch. Well, a brand new Witcher game was announced today. It's supposedly going to be a new saga, so kind of forget Geralt. This is going to be its own thing, its own series of games. And the big news announced with this announcement today is that they are abandoning their old Red Engine and moving into Unreal Engine 5. They did note that this partnership with Epic is just for the engine. It has nothing to do with Epic Game Store, so there won't be like an exclusive PC release of Epic Game Store. And this game's going to be a ways away, probably three, four, five years away. Some people obviously betting eight years, you know, based on Cyberpunk. But yeah, I, think, I don't think it's going to quite be that long, but I guess we'll wait and see. Uh, I don't know how much of the original team from The Witcher is still at the studio. Uh, and we obviously don't know if this saga is going to be any good, but I do think it has a chance to come to a future Nintendo platform. By then, Nintendo should have their next generation Nintendo device out. That should be comparable enough to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Obviously, probably significantly less powerful if it's still handheld, but comparable enough to get a port over like we did with The Witcher 3. So I do think that is something to consider. Obviously, The Witcher 3 did really, really well on Switch, so I could see them wanting to put it on Nintendo's platform if it's powerful enough to support it. And we don't know yet because we don't actually know what this platform is. We have an idea based on some leaked specs and those specs sound like something that could run Unreal Engine 5 games, but we'll just have to wait and see. Our last story is one that's a little weird. This is strange in many ways. This is, well, this is actually correcting history. So for the longest amount of time, we always thought that Shigeru Miyamoto should be getting all the credit for a quote that goes along the lines of rushed games are forever bad, delayed games are forever good, which we all know today that that quote isn't necessarily true. Sometimes rushed games are really, really good. And sometimes delayed games, you know, I don't know, like Cyberpunk 2077 and it's a whole bunch of delays, doesn't necessarily mean the game's gonna be great either. But this was a quote largely attributed to Shigeru Miyamoto during the development time of Ocarina of Time when it went through all of its delays in the 90s. But somebody dared, $100 on the line, dared someone to actually prove that Miyamoto is the originating source of this quote. They said, hey, find me proof one way or another that Shigeru Miyamoto said this, or if he didn't, who said it? Uh, and well, someone went ahead and provided that proof and it turns out that no, Shigeru Miyamoto is probably not where this quote came from and Shigeru Miyamoto has never actually stated that quote publicly. Doesn't mean he didn't use it behind the scenes, but it was never used publicly in an interview setting or to any known fan who's reported on this. So. Um, it was it was put out there that I believe that this is a misattributed quote. This is what I believe the source is a quote from Jason Schreiber at GT Interactive in Game Fan, June of 1998, page 63. I'll describe why I think this is the case. Um, and he goes on here and here's, here's what it says in that magazine. We were given a look at some of the most stunning 3D worlds ever created and a chance to see the highly touted level editor in action. When asked about whether or not gamers or the gaming press would read too much in the fact that Unreal was late, not just late, but really late, as the game was expected out early last year, Jason Schreiber, senior producer with GT Interactive, had some profound words. A good game is only late until it ships. A bad game is forever bad. We wanted to take our time with this game. We know we have something special and we didn't want to rush things, which you might note, all the elements of the quote that we attribute to Shigeru Miyamoto are there, just in a different order and done a set a little bit differently. Later on, an unknown person quoted this exact phrasing in a November issue of Usenet in reference to Ocarina of Time. And from that point forward, the quote was consistently attributed to Nintendo, even though it doesn't appear that anyone from Nintendo actually said this. Now, notably, Shigeru Miyamoto, you will find articles over the years taking credit for this quote. So this quote that's been attributed to him, he doesn't deny it, he seems to take credit for it, uh, but has never actually stated the quote publicly. He's never had it uttered out of his mouth. So it does look like Jason Schreiber might have been where the quote originated from, and then maybe it got more widely adapted by other developers. Um, so the way that it 
it works here since 1998 is that, yeah, Miyamoto might have heard that interview or heard that quote or heard that phraseology used somewhere and decided to adapt it into the internal teams at like Retro Studios and Nintendo of Japan and kind of go from there. It's one of those situations where he might have actually used this um, ideology in the development of games at Nintendo, but he didn't actually say it publicly. And because he never said it publicly, it's attribution. It's like should be attributed properly to Jason Schreiber rather than Shigeru Miyamoto. Even if it is a phrase now that might be commonly used throughout the industry, and Shigeru Miyamoto does try to take credit for it, he never actually said it publicly. He only used it behind the scenes. So, yeah, this is something that. Uh, it's kind of weird, it's kind of a weird part of gaming history to correct, but it's always important that one of the most famous video game you know, developer quotes of all time is actually giving credit to the right person. Jason Schreiber seems to be where this originated from, Shigeru Miyamoto, maybe you know, t a latching onto that quote later down the line. So um, again, this is not me trying to discredit Miyamoto and his work or trying to say that he ever lied to you guys by taking credit. Uh, if you, you direct English to Japanese to English translations aren't perfect and on top of that just because he says they use that development philosophy yeah Nintendo very well could use that development philosophy but it doesn't mean that they originated that philosophy so anyways folks I am Nintendo Rubble Jads from Nintendo Pride thank you so much for tuning in let me know what you think about all of today's news a long one today lots of big stories hopefully you guys enjoy it we'll be back live streaming tonight having a great time I'll see you guys then Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. This has been a lot of fun. Sorry this video came out a bit later in the day than I planned, but you know what? My children have off this week. It's their spring break, so doing it as best as I can. Peace out, everybody.